Boom. Hello, The Connected. My name is Evan, and this is LC Podcast number 49. I'm here joined on this lovely Canadian cloudy morning with my good friends and live connection business partners. We have Eric somewhere on one of the screens. Jack, Jared, Matt, Peter. And also joining us for a special cameo sometime later will be Graydon. Now, once again, as the podcast dictates, we will now discuss items that are of interest to us. So I believe that the first interesting topic that is interesting to us will be given by Jared. Please, All right, Jared. All right. Begin. Wow. So as many of you know, Matt so amazingly gave me Pokemon Online, or sorry, uh, Nintendo Online, um, and yet, I, I shared my friend code on our Discord, and the only person who added my friend code was Graydon, who equally uses the Switch as little as I do. <laughs> yeah. And I was laughing because the original reason Matt got me online Nintendo was because he, cause I was talking about raid battles, and I was like, well, I don't really, wa- really want to do online. But he's like, no, it's a great experience. You should play raid battles online. And then I was like, okay, fair enough. So I got I got Nintendo online. Thanks to Matt again. He's an awesome guy for doing that. Um, and I tried some raid battles online. No matter what star the raid battle was, no one joined online. <laughs> I got the highest star possible and no one joined online. Five stars? Pokemon, yep. is, Pokemon Five stars. is officially dead? Is Sword and Shield a dead game? So, I, I was laughing about this because it was like, I, I got this whole thing to have that experience. And then the only person to add me of my friends was the only person who didn't have Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Like, I don't have Pokemon dude, and I didn't add fair. you either. Oh, true. Fair enough. <laughs> I sent... I sent my friend code directly to you over a year ago and you did nothing about over a year ago it. i didn't have i didn't have Ooh, nintendo online yeah. you you don't need you nintendo online friends to have friends it. on your switch oh see i didn't know which that which makes this even more fascinating because i had no idea you yeah. sent your friend code to us i'm so sorry i i know yeah, i've known for the longest message. time that i didn't have a certain <laughs> lc member on my switch and i couldn't remember who it was I don't think I agree. Either. <laughs> There's so many of us. Didn't bother to just look. <laughs> That's because Matt has a friends a massive friends list on his Switch for some reason. I actually do. I I don't know why. I barely know any of the people I have friends on my Switch. Of all the I'm platforms, I'm pretty sure the only the only friends I have on my Switch are Eric and Matt. That's it. Those are the two. There's no one else. Yeah, me. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know if I have you, Evan. I I'd have to check. That is, uh, that is kind of a bummer, though, Jerry. Um, what's kind of fascinating that I remember being a bit surprised by when, like, kind of the game first started is that, like, I think Game Freak kind of assumed that people would just want to join each other's raids all the time. But if you're going to go out of your way to join somebody's raid, like, it better be good. So, like, if it, like, a- a- most of the time, any sub five star Pokemon, not really gonna, not really gonna fly. It's only kind of a certain condition, certain number of conditions where you're likely to get someone join you. Like, uh, if it's a version exclusive, uh, if it's a big perp when it's the giant s- circly purple beam instead of the usual red one, that gives you more items, so more people are willing to join that. So, anyways, I'm sorry that that happened to you because. That's frustrating because I remember feeling the same way. I was like, is this thing on? Like when I was trying to invite people for the first time, because turns out nobody really wants to do a tier one Vullaby raid to go out of their <laughs> way. So, <laughs> um, let me know next time you're playing and I'll go on and we'll do some raids together. Sounds good. I I'm also... On Nintendo oh. Online. Sorry, Jared. Just real fast. I've been playing Splatoon 2. That works really well. Like... The only Nintendo game I've played where the online is just like seamless. You join a match, you do the match. Like a normal game. Oh, jeez. No no Smash Bros. bullshit. (laughs) No punching in a stupid ass code to connect to some motherfucker. Oh, Sword and Shield's online system is kind of poo, but 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so on my grief has, has Nintendo ever like done it, like online co-op well? Like other than what Eric just said about Splatoon, like uh, they have a their own is pretty good too. But that's what, what? not their own title. Smite works yeah. pretty good. On I it. heard. Yeah. Think not their own title. Eight is all right. That's yeah, decent. Mario Kart's on like kind of leaves. Good, well, it leaves for me something to be desired. Like I wish it was like a ranking, like a leveling system or something, rather mm. than just like you get points based off of like your races. Like that's meaningless to me. You want you know? some sort of progression yeah. system? Yeah. Yeah, I hate online games that don't have a progression system. I feel like. That was my biggest grief with like Master Chief Collection. Was like you didn't have a level or anything. It's Does like, it not? Yeah, I like playing the I like playing no, the game, does. but like, well, yeah, when it first came out, it didn't have uh, anything. Yeah, but I like playing games. But I I also like to see like, you know, <clears throat> some progression. I want people to know that I've been here for a while. I may suck, but you know, at least <laughs> I played a game a lot. <laughs> um, Sword and Shield hey. does actually have a really comprehensive. Uh, Online rank system. Hey, big guy, look at you. Hey there, boys. I forgot you guys. That's a man on back. a face cam. Yeah. Look at me. I have a face. <laughs> My big bearded face. And he's got this a good face intense. face cam background as well. He positioned his art perfectly behind him. I think he positioned Other himself. That blank background. The art. <laughs> no, I moved the art from a different wall. <laughs> as you should. As you should. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, boys. Hey, no worries. What's going on? Oh man! So my brother started this landscaping company, right? Which is all well and good. Uh -oh. Um, you know, him and his friends—they're trying to make some money, but he's—he's uh, he's not really understanding the asset part of the mm -hmm. company. So he promised these people that he would move five cubic yards of uh, mulch today, and he didn't have a truck or a trailer or anything. And so he was asking oh, me, to say, "Hey, my God. So tomorrow morning." So that's uh, that's what I did this morning. <laughs> I moved oh, wow. uh, a ton of mulch. The glory of and you have to help him again tomorrow? Exactly. <laughs> the, the glory of being the older brother who actually knows how to do shit, so when the younger brother takes up new enterprises, you're like, yeah, I got some time. I'll help. <laughs> so how much is he paying you? Oh, you just case of beer. Oh, all right. He wasn't paying very much for the job, so... Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, that is that is pretty good of you to help because I know I know if I were in that position I would be looking to my older brother for help as well. So I'm glad that you are actually willing to give him a hand when he needs it. I was pretty reluctant. Say that I was, I was gonna... Your brother wouldn't help you. <laughs> yeah, that's no, he, definitely he, what I thought. He he would, but not without giving me a really hard time about it. Not without yeah, making me think that he wasn't going to. I guess it's just an older brother thing, isn't it? But yeah. like. Not without like playing with my emotions and like making me feel like I have to like get down on my knees and beg him to do it until he's like, "All right, I'll do it. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. We're all about family here at Live Connection. Mm -hmm. Help your family out. That's right. Evan, I was so confused for a sec. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Actually, survey. Well, I think how many of us in Live Connection of older brothers? Is it just me and Evan? Doing the math on my head? I guess so, yeah. 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 I know Jared has an older sister. Yeah. But Jared's um, the youngest. Graydon, Jack, and I'm Peter the are all the family. oldest, and Eric, yeah. Jared, Evan, and I are the youngest. Yeah. Interesting. I'm the youngest, but I'm also Eric. the tallest in my family. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think about I Eric. I was like, <laughs> I just thought about his nephews and i was like well eric's older than his nephews so <laughs> <laughs> that's really how that works for the most part <laughs> you know what that means we have a perfect divide of the younger the young squad and the old squad i think we, need, we don't we have need any to, middle uh, incorporate right that. where's the middle game huh? yeah we need to hire a middle child to balance out the our family organizations <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you're connection. trying to. I don't know why you're trying to divide live connection like that when we've already have the perfect division of live connection to circumcised to not circumcised people. spit take. And you can leave that to everyone. Yeah, okay. leave that to the imagination. Who's on what okay, team? So, oh, not the spit no. take stuff again. <laughs> 
okay uh, fine i won't go into it but I, I want you to actually know so we had this oh conversation God. we had just finished a stream and we were just playing some rocket league and we were just we were just shooting the shit we were talking about some stuff far too inappropriate to go on our podcast or any of our online content <laughs> and i'm not i'm not going into detail all i'm gonna say on the matter is i insisted that if you ever get the opportunity to actually do a spit take, it's like a really satisfying and funny thing. And I was getting lots of arguments and people were talking about the logistics of it, but we ended up having a conversation that was so funny after that that I legitimately had to get up and do a wait, no, never mind. No, hang on, that defeats my point. Hold on. I had to yeah, do a no, your point, That's the... uh, your point, you, your argument you were trying to make, which is what all of us disagreed yes. with, is that you get to choose to do a spit take. You don't no, choose to no. do a spit take. Something funny doesn't happen, and then you're not just like, hold on one second. Time for me to spit. <laughs> you're not supposed to yeah. force it that ruins the no. comedy of it no it's it's okay so it was it was it, i i it wouldn't say it was forced it was like it's not like i was like ooh, i'm gonna spit out all of my water here it was that the first time it happened to me I saw something crazy on the television as I was walking through the living room after taking a drink of water, and I and there was no way I was not gonna spit. It was it was a it was a hundred percent spit scenario. You got me, but like I had a little bit of time, so I like fell to my knees and did my spit take into the fireplace because I had time. But I was still gonna do a spit take. There was no universe where I didn't do a spit take in that instance. You make it sound like like the Modern Warfare Two slow motion breaches, where like it happens like you must move quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's really satisfying, and um, and it's just it, it's just good comedy. It's just a good time. Do you ever see that scene um in one of the Fast and Furious movies where? One dude says something to Dwayne Johnson's character, and Dwayne Johnson gives him the most fire comeback right off the bat, and then Ludacris like just does a spit take. Apparently, that was all improvised. It was um, oh yeah, was that guy's no, name I know Dan? exactly what you're talking about, actually. Okay, it, Dwayne Johnson and the the guy who I'm talking about, they have this big feud. I'm forgetting the guy's name, Tyrese Gibson. Oh, Tyrese. yeah, that's it. Yeah, Isn't so like John Hobbs or something. Well, that's that's, that's name Tyrese the, Gibson. That's the character's name. That's one of Dwayne Johnson's many characters. Actually, slightly off topic, but I just thought about this. Have you guys noticed that Dwayne Johnson over the years has had a habit of like infiltrating movie franchises that have already been running? He yeah, jumps in the second uh, journey. That's Jerry's favorite actor. Yeah, I was about to say, don't get Jerry. I didn't going. say. I didn't don't say it was my going. favorite actor. <laughs> I said I like him as an actor, and you immediately say that's my favorite actor. I like a lot of actors. <laughs> What's another actor um, you like? Yeah, huh? but Jared, that's your favorite. Another actor I like? Dwayne Johnson? I like Will Fer Dwayne Johnson. I like Dwayne Johnson 1. Dwayne Johnson 2.2. 2. See, Jay that's what I like. The Rock. What about The Rock? I like The Rock. No, I, I like The Rock. The Rock is honestly better than the other Dwayne Johnson's that I like. I mean, it is pretty cool that they managed to clone the original Dwayne Johnson in the tube. And they I, the I like Jason Statham. Mm -hmm. He's good. I do enjoy, I do enjoy um, Andrew Garfield. Um, Tom Holland's been really good in the movies that I've seen him in. Wow, that's two Spider Mans. Do you like Do you like Tobey yeah. Maguire as well? <laughs> no, I don't like Tobey. You know what? You guys are a bunch of dicks. My Peter, name one actor you like. Or Dwayne Johnson and all the Spider Mans. <laughs> Jason Statham wasn't a Spider Man. That's true. <laughs> it's a movie. Star 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 opportunity right there. <laughs> Can you? Can you imagine Jason Statham walking through his science high school talking to fucking Emma Stone? Like, I'm sorry. I'm... I was just imagining. It's a goddamn, I was just it's imagining a goddamn Spider Man Megalodon. as Crank. It's a responsibility. I thought you were going to say uh, Tom Hardy there for a second, Jerry, and I really like him. I, I was like going to say Tom Hardy, Hardy as well, but you guys are fucking that pieces like of shit. Up. If you had you led with Tom Hardy, we might not have made fun he of him. He played Venom, so... <laughs> um, Tom you know Hardy what? played Bane. He, to... he yeah, did play Bane. It. it took yeah. me years Bane, to figure Bane. that out. Like, Tom Hardy has been in, like, the scene in, like, really big movies for, I think, a lot longer than maybe some of us have been, like, aware of it. At least that's the case for me. Like, he was in, um, he was in Inception. I never realized that until, like, I recently watched Inception. He's just a British dude in that movie. And then, yeah, he's in, um, 
uh, Batman, what's that, The Dark Knight? Or Dark Knight Rises? Dark Knight Rises. Knight Rises. I, don't, Those are... I forget what movie it is, but you can just see his full-on dick. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did know that. Yeah. You could look that up. You you look that that's up right why now. he's my favorite actor. Tom Hardy, full Hard. on. Actually, I'm not going to do this right now. No, just search Tom Hardy hard. To, no, Tom Hardy, but hard is in capitals. It's a code word. Tom Hardy hard. <laughs> it just skips Google okay, and I, takes you to the dark web. I like actually, the that fuel that's in this. Oh. Sorry. Go on, Matt. Yes. Talk. Sorry, my bad. I'm I'm just bouncing from thought to thought. I didn't mean to cut you off. Um, I was texting Evan and Courtney about this last night. Have you guys heard of a show on Netflix called you guys Dead have a to group Me? Chat? Yeah, we have an iMessage chat. It's just Evan, Courtney, and I. Yeah, I didn't send a single message because I fell asleep last night. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that, by the way. I wasn't sure whether to refer to you like in the third person because I was talking to Courtney or refer to you like directly because you're in the group chat, but then you didn't answer to anything, so that's cool. The problems of Matt's life. I'm... Yeah. I'm not a good Anyways, texter. I heard being Matt. <laughs> yeah. Um Dead to Me is um no, I basically watched... you watched but I was good, but I'll just watch you go and then I'll I'll give you my opinion. Um, I'm, I'm, I've only watched like, like chunks of it. Like there's definitely plot stuff that I've missed cause I haven't watched, but it's pretty, pretty easy to figure out. Basically this one lady hit accidentally does it or does it hit a hit and run on this other lady's husband. And then okay, you're already the... spoiling. Like that doesn't get revealed to like episode two or three. Oh, so you're shit. doing a bad job. Okay. Oh, I'm doing a bad job. Hang on. Let me dead to me anyways it's a netflix show it's about this lady whose husband dies and then she befriends another lady whose husband also dies and it's all and it's a dark comedy about the friendship yeah. that they have and the wicked twists that occur throughout their relationship yeah and it is really wild because it just it just bounces from like extreme drama to like insane comedy like really really quickly it just it honestly like it, it just kind of blows me away like how uh like just how wild that show can get at times. So doesn't sound like a um, cup of tea. It, it is like it, it wasn't it got great good. ratings. Sorry, I got like an eight out of ten on uh, From who? IMDb. Okay. <laughs> it got yeah. a seven out of well, ten I... from IGN because of too much water. But I wonder if it got. <laughs> I wonder if there was any of Jared's favorite actors in it. <laughs> um, uh, you know, you know what? Uh, one, I'm gonna I'm gonna point out one that I think everyone can agree is a really good actor, and that's Idris Elba is a great oh, actor, yeah, and yeah, he is actor. he is a hundred percent probably I'd say arguably my favorite actor. Did you script that little bit there? That's what he's been working on the past yeah, five minutes. I was, no, I've been looking at the page for good actors f- open right now. <laughs> my oh, favorite piece there you of go. content that's dead to me, you really fucker. <laughs> I my, hate uh, my, my, I can't wait my till he shrinks. <laughs> my favorite piece of content Idris Elba's ever done was the uh, the hot ones um, little clip of him coughing after eating a hot wing. Best content ever. Great content. Great content. But um, anyways, with all the Paul feel Red that's Red been Red. happening. Oh yeah, Paul Red's a pretty good one. There's a good some good memes that came out of hot ones. I love Hollywood. Always be my favorite. Yeah, hey, I've been watching a lot of like highlights and stuff lately. Hey, look at this. So I hear there's a great debate that has shaken Live Connection to its core, and there's a lot of energy around this debate that actually hasn't even happened yet, but it's been promised what? to occur right now what? by these gentlemen above me. It sounds like you're the one from doing making the promises. Yeah, there's a great debate <laughs> that everyone's debate. talking about that no one knows about. Where'd you find this <laughs> that no one has talked no, about yet. I've just made it those up. Of you, debate me. Those of you in our Discord, which you should join our Discord if you're not a part of it. We have a Discord. Would know that this conversation is happening about what truly is the best trading card game out there. Oh. Is it Hearthstone, Magic the Gathering, the Pokemon trading card game, Yu-Gi-Oh? Bakugan? I don't think, don't know. I don't think there was a discussion on uh, what was best. It was a discussion Beyblades? on differences. I was going to say Beyblade. Here's <laughs> I know what the best trading card game is. It's a game where you collect spinning discs. 
<laughs> yeah, and there's no cards to be seen in the whole process. It's crazy. <laughs> That's what makes um, it There is cards, yeah. actually. You're wrong. Are they the bit beasts that you put in the top of the Beyblade? I don't remember, but I, I remember fucked, being cards. I fucked with Beyblade so oh, heavy when I was a, a child. Let no, it rip. Yeah. Shut up. Anyways, the uh, the actual conversation. conversation was about basically I just drew a comparison between competitive Pokemon battling and Hearthstone, and I believe Graydon couldn't really see the correlation at all. And honestly, I've actually never played Hearthstone, so I've just been trying to read up on like the general. Don't you snicker at me, boy? So you've been just reading, reading up, up on rather the... than playing. I, well, I know it's free to play. I, I just. Uh, like I, I just wanted to have like a general. I wanted to confirm the stuff that I actually know about Hearthstone and just make sure I have like a general understanding of the way the game is played, so that I know that the comparisons I was drawing were a bit more salient. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Um, and, and so it, it was really just the idea that like, um, and and so when you say competitive Pokemon, that can technically be a little bit vague because there's the uh, video game championship and then the trading card game. Um, but I've only ever played the, the video game competitive. And Wait, even and so, like... card games? Those are both card things? No. Well, the, the com like, VGC is obviously just Pokemon battling, like what you would do in the games, but in, like, an actual competitive format. You know what I mean? Like what we do when we do those streams, right? Um... But, like, the the fact that it's, like, you know, like, turn-based, um, like, sorry, yeah, sorry, turn-based, the fact that you've got these units out that you need to kind of be aware of, like, their board positioning and be planning, like, a few turns ahead and stuff, like, I'm kind of going off the cuff, but, like, I mean, mainly the fact that they're turn-based and the fact that, like, you know, you have to kind of be really cognizant on what unit you're bringing out and what reason you're bringing out the unit and how it's going to contribute to giving you your win and stuff like that. I felt like there was a few um, kind of correlations in the way so the games are played. they both share the basic foundations of card games. So, Matt, what you're saying is they're both similar, despite one not having cards, is because they're both strategy games. Um, well, it's yes, because... Because based Sorry. on that argument, you could say that every strategy, every game, every game in, in the world was... has has strategy of some sort. We have to think before you do it. False. Life is Mario my favorite Party. one. Fair enough. I, well, I feel like there's still strategy in the mini games, Some... and there's still strategy in like in like trying to figure out where you're gonna go. It's very, go, it's very yeah. loose. It's very loose yeah, strategy. But, yeah. Okay. But it's still I'll, strategy. I'll, I'll accept that. You're right. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, Matt. The, the think, reason I, I said something in the Discord. What? Is you couldn't believe that I was drawing that. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, you just felt like you were reaching. You, like, saw something, you were like, eh, I can relate this to Pokemon. <laughs> you I, need, Pokemon. I need Eric to not be on the podcast anymore, because he's going to think of something that's going to counter my argument. If you had compared uh, Hearthstone <laughs> to, like, the trading card game for Pokemon, that would have been an absolutely apt, like... Yeah, apt comparison because they're both card games where you have to bring out units and then and spend resources to make those units work. I guess it's a little bit different in Hearthstone because you have a mana cost per card, where mm -hmm. each card has to come out dependent on how much mana you have. Yeah. Um, whereas Pokemon, I don't think you need to do anything to bring the card up, but you need to spend the energy tokens to like do moves, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I've never yeah. played the, the Pokemon card game. But... Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Just text me over there. So. Oh yeah, Graydon? Is that is that the truth? Matt, Sorry. <laughs> why were you even involving the games at all then? Why? Why? What? Do you, what? That um, completely went I, over my head that you were involved in the games. Now, okay, now, you, now like, you just confused me. Yeah, I thought this so, was a card discussion. Discussion. Yeah. I've never played the trading card game. I was I was talking about the video game and drawing comparisons there just because I kind of felt like like elements of the way they're played and kind of like the strategy that it takes to succeed in them were really similar, but it I based was, on what you guys says it does make sense that that's just kind of maybe just universal elements of turn-based strategy so um, i was so happy to talk about trading card games and then matt made a way for it to be about the pokemon video game 
<laughs> well, I mean, that's what I said. It was like in the first place. Was like was it? I don't remember. I, I couldn't. I I remember I, I, reading I, the Discord, but I didn't yeah. remember. I thought you were talking about the trading card game. Yeah. So I, I wasn't specific. I, I wasn't specific, but I, I was referring to the because I've never played the trading card game. Like, despite knowing a lot about Pokemon and loving Pokemon, I've just never messed around with the trading card games other than collecting them. Um, and I don't. I have no idea how they work other than like some really small elements but yeah like i i yeah i just like the pokemon video games is what i was thinking of <clears> because like they're still very strategic and like at first like so graden messaged back and said like how could they possibly be similar and i like i tried to craft my response really carefully because like i know graden's never played competitive pokemon but as i was thinking about that i'm like i've also never played hearthstone like ever so I wasn't really in a position to make those claims because I was only thinking of like kind of the small knowledge about Hearthstone that I do that. So I looked some stuff up, tried to like pick out some verifications, but I feel like Matt, maybe I don't have much of it. I would, I would like to read directly from the Discord here. Uh, here we um, go. As you replied to people talking about card games, competitive Pokemon, oh, sorry, quote, competitive Pokemon battling is really good for chess slash card game types, especially if you're familiar with the Pokemon you're using. Not to mention there's like an infinite resource to get you into it right away. An online battle battle simulator and team builder. Not to mention you can share rental codes and borrow a pre-made team for ranked battles too. Like that has nothing to do with the card game conversation that they were well, talking about. I guess because I guess they were just talking about like like strategy, strategy games that you can just kind of get into and I just thought I'd throw my hat in the ring. But, um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, Matt, maybe if you played more of the card game, you would have got done better on that test you did yesterday. Ooh. I had Matt do a I, test yesterday. The Pokemon. Yeah, I The Pokemon uh -oh. AP exam. <laughs> 70 questions in an bad. hour and 15 minutes. At the end it of it, Matt, you, Matt, Matt was like, I got a 95%, guys. 97, I said. 97. Oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. He got a 71. Oh, man. He got like 20 questions wrong. 20. That's barely, that's barely a pass if you're trying to get a designation in something. Professor I mean, it was an AP so. exam, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, Professor Amoroso wrote that test like fucking garbage. There were literally questions where I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. That's not even right. And it, what is uh, the question? Okay, so he was here's so my problem. upset here's, by the end. It was great. Here's an example problem. of one of those questions. Okay. I bet you I, I get it. I, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. So let's say, or what's your name, Evan? Let's <laughs> say. <laughs> Evan, you <laughs> you've arrived at New Moon Island, Evan. You're fighting Darkrai. Yeah. Um, which of these four False. moves that I'm about to list False. Uh, you fight, you would fight be... the lunar Pokemon at New Moon Island. No, you don't. You fight the lunar Pokemon at Crescent Moon <laughs> Island. You fucking <laughs> unknowledgeable. Yeah, continue. continue. Right, go, go on. Go on. Go on. Go okay, so you're fighting a Darkrai. You're trying to catch this Darkrai. Which of the four? Which of these four moves would be the least useful? Um, mean Look, Sleep Powder, Will O' Wisp. Uh, false wipe. Mean look, because he look. doesn't run from you. Yeah, so that that would be logical, right? He doesn't run from you. It's false. The, the move has literally no purpose. It's the least useful, right? You're wrong. It's will o wisp. It's true. It's will o wisp. Well, I guess because I guess I guess it's actually less useful because it burns them, which gives it a chance of dying before you catch. So it actually works yeah. against but you in that case. Idiot. Does so, it save before going against the fucking legendary? That's true, yeah. but I guess you have to assume you're you're a good Pokemon player and you only do one encounter per. If you well, lose, you're you a child. Time. And and so technically, like oh, the, the question was, what is the least useful? Will O' Wisp isn't tech isn't necessarily the least useful because yeah, yeah it puts it a works timer. against you. It's negative. Well, it doesn't because if the, if they have a status condition, they have a greater chance of being caught. So technically, if you use Will O' Wisp, you could argue that you're using Will O' Wisp to put a status condition on so that it would be easy to catch. Is it a good status condition to put on? Not at all. But but see, that's the thing. Like 
with this test, they they always put in those other that that other answer that if you don't actually know the answer, you're likely to pick that one. They do that really typical test thing where it's like the bait and switch to kind of ensure that you're only going to get it right yeah. if you really know the answer. That's a, but that's a common the and, thing in multiple choice tests is that the they bait have... and switch always made more sense as an answer than the actual answer. Oh, it was ridiculous, no. it, man. The bait and switch is there to catch people that studied a little bit, but not enough to truly understand what the question is asking. So there, you and I both demonstrated that we don't know Pokemon enough. My favorite part about the exam overall is that there was, because Eric and Matt did it together, I wanted to give them, you know, two brains, or power, more powerful than one. There was like three or four questions where Eric was like, I'm pretty sure it's that one. And Matt was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Then as we were scrolling down, he was like, wait, wait, I think it's the other one because of this, this, that, and that. All three or four of those was wrong. Eric's answers were the right ones. <laughs> and I trusted Matt. Yeah, Every time did. he was like, Eric, do you trust me? And I was like, yes, Matt, I do. <laughs> a common theme throughout it, that's true. Hey, Peter, how long did this test take? An uh, hour and it a half. Them, no, it, it only it ended up taking them about an hour. They had an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, that's not bad. Was there a time limit? Yeah, there is. I had a oh, okay, going okay. and everything. I would have, I would have ripped the paper from their desk and like, put that yeah. pen down, pencils down, please. If I see funny anyone... there was a short answer section that we didn't get to do. Oh yeah. no, that was way too much work. They wanted you to write essays and stuff. We're not doing that. No, no we're not. Doing that. Peter doesn't want to write and mark no. the essays. <laughs> it was hard enough writing down their answers, <laughs> but trying to draw things. Like, here's the thing. You know that they, 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 that they didn't necessarily know what kind of questions they were putting because there was one where instead of having a letter in the answer key it was just a star and it was because it like didn't meet the standard of a question and it's because it was like you got four pokemon each with these four moves which one is the best to use against this certain pokemon and and it was like it was clearly the the fairy type because it was a dark and fighting, so it's four times super effective. But it was a Mimikyu. Mimikyu is a physical attacker, and its fairy type move was a special attacking move, which means that they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. No, Jesus, you got that completely wrong. They were what the test was doing was memeing on the fact that during actual tests, when enough people get an answer wrong, they sometimes omit it for because it wasn't up to standards or whatever. They were mm. memeing on that. Mm. That's the only thing they were doing. That you're looking into it way too much. You know, that was the standard anyways. While Matt was busy getting 71% on Pokemon <laughs> tests, I was busy being an absolute baller in Rocket League the other day. And I do have something to show you, gentlemen. Uh, oh, man, he's, he brought a game clip with him. Yes, yes. I'm going to share you my guys screen. guys are in for such a treat. Oh, my God. Yo, is this the thing that you hyped up? Is this the one I've seen? I think Matt's hyped it up a little bit too much, but oh, but right. but but on the contrary, what, what we're doing here. All right, so I'll, I'll do. It. What's the context? Hey, can you guys hear my dogs? Yeah, no, yeah. they're serious hype. The dogs are rolling. There's like the there's like twelve of them. <laughs> yeah, just mute your mic. Okay, so. The context be behind this, as you can see in the top left corner of the video, major comeback to win 1v3. So I was in a competitive 3v3 batch, and as you can see, there's my username, Ouchikawa, there. And as the game begun, my first teammate ended up disconnecting. And oh my god, it is lagging completely on yeah, the stream. Is, All right, that's I not can understand work. why it was so hard for you to, to make a comeback <laughs> with this player. <Yeah. laughs> Anyways, I'll skip to the end here, so you can see the scoreboard right there. I ended up playing from the the four minute mark to the end um, by myself. Well, I was gonna scroll no matter what, but you okay. didn't hear me. So. I won a rocket league um, game, guys. I did it. I Peter, I was by myself for the whole game. My whole thing, you know, my whole team I disconnected. That, I can't. If I can't see it, I don't believe my, it. My whole team disconnected, <laughs> and then it was asshole. just me. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. That's it. I won one v one. Thanks, gentlemen, for interrupting me constantly. Thanks a lot. Fuck you all. <laughs> you guys. Why do you say I'm gentlemen? Serious. It was Peter that interrupted you. Because I am a gentleman. <clears throat> I was just you super hyped about it. I, I, I won a three v one by myself, and I, I not only did I win, but I won by like five.
So I, I will I will say Evan that's that's pretty I, I can relate in the fact that when that there's a lot of issues with that and Cedric of people leaving competitive one and and then you're down like five to three or whatever um, and it's pretty insane when you come back and win even when you're shorthanded in uh, people especially if you did it on your own that's pretty impressive and especially Rocket League I mean I'm not great at the game as everyone in this uh, chat knows I don't but, agree. I don't agree. um I I'm, I I think that's pretty good. that's pretty sweet. How do I know? Seriously, I watch the replay. Like the whole video. You had some dank dangles throughout that. Yeah, I was quite proud the of myself e. for it. The dank dangle. Dangles, dank aerials. Dangle. I'm getting better. Though I'm still... The game doesn't think I'm better because I still can't get out of gold, but... <laughs> One day. One day. One day, maybe. Uh um, I've been doing pretty much all of my ranked matches with uh, Evan and Brendan, and the first time I ever got ranked in uh, Rocket League, I was gold four. Three. Three. There's no? no gold four. Oh, well, There's yeah, no that would make sense then, wouldn't it? <laughs> gold three! <laughs> gold three, baby! <laughs> we should get Matt to take the AP Rocket yeah. League exam. Ooh. <laughs> as, you, as you can see, <laughs> Matt's ranking shocked me because I have only been able to reach gold three once in my whole life. Well, so Ev the Evan, fact that he Evan, made it immediately you say he's being killed. carried? Evan, didn't... Uh, no, I would not say he's being carried. We're didn't, good I, didn't I rank with you and Brayden and I ranked higher than you had been <laughs> in that season? Not because I'm good at the game, but because I was playing with you guys in those last few matches we won, but it was just so funny. <laughs> Well, I've like I've competed in like ten different Rocket League seasons, and the majority of those I ended up just placing bronze because I would play enough to rank and then just like stop playing. So that kind of seriously affects my placements at the beginning of each season, unfortunately. So I well, think I, I would place a bit higher. If I, I know didn't in do that. in Siege when you do competitive, if you do place badly. Sometimes it's better because literally in Siege, if you're in anything lower than like if you're in bronze on lower when you place, people are just memeing. It's just shit. You're just going to keep going down as much as you can because a lot of people have um, mer smurf accounts where they just go in and they basically lose to lower ranks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and there'll be there'll be guys who are, who are tiered gold, but they just want to have some easy wins, easy victories in there. Um so I know that in some situations, it's better just to... And I know it takes in consideration your previous rank when you rank in the next season. But it's like sometimes it's better to not play because it's just going to get worse. And not because of anything you're doing, but because there's a bunch of assholes in the world that like to yeah. do that. So that, that well, I, 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 in your competitive game. Yeah. I, I am a believer that like... When you're playing these competitive games like Smite, Overwatch, anything, if you're playing in the rank system, really you kind of get capped skill level, skill wise, at the same level as whoever you're playing with. So mm -hmm. like if you're stuck in bronze, it's hard to break out of that because you end up just like playing like a bronze player because your whole team plays like bronze players. Whereas yeah. like I feel like you take someone who doesn't has no experience with the game you make him play with like obviously there's a there's a cap to that like you can't make someone who's never played the game play ungodly but like take someone in rocket league make them play with gold players versus make someone play with bronze players for a week that person that plays with the gold players is already going to be better than the bronze player even if that's the right. same amount that's my yeah, no, I, guess. I can agree with that uh, to answer your question that. peter no i'm not necessarily carried i definitely am carried to the extent that i'm able to make gold three on my first rank season but brendan and uh, evan and i have, have had a little team going for a while and actually sometimes we have some really good games yeah we broke up we had a we had a big band breakup the other day we just couldn't uh, agree on our gameplay style so it's uh it's past tense now that team mm. it's not i don't know sorry to hear that are you guys taking applications? <laughs> yeah, we are. Yeah, Brendan just not from short. What? Well, Peter's actually a really good Rocket League player. <laughs> Is he? <laughs> I used to, I when I played oh. I was, but I haven't played in forever. Well, what's funny is I um like I started playing with Brendan because I told him I was godlike at Rocket League, and then I was very early on into playing with him, really humbled about how much I didn't know. But 
It's been it's been cool. I I love Rocket League, man. It's playing with Evan and Brendan is so cool because Evan makes these unreal plays. Brendan's a freaking hot shot, and when I play good, we all play good. What you say? You tend no, to do just... that a little bit, eh, man? <laughs> do what? Sorry. Like you come in hot and you're like, oh, I played this game. I'm fucking I'm the best, you know. And then you watch someone else play and you're like, oh. I've never watched anyone else play the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's... I love it. What can you do, right? You're my Rocket favorite, League are really... If you're, if you're going to watch any eSports, I would definitely recommend, like, watching some, like, highlights from Rocket League competitions because, like, it it's just unreal. Like, honestly, they, they, they should just not even call it... Well, I guess... They shouldn't even have cars in the game when they're playing competitive because they're just all in the air at, at all yeah. times. They oh. don't even touch the ground. It's like <laughs> it's ridiculous how skilled these players are at the high ends of the game. Who who was there when I learned how to fly in that game? And I now that's all I've been doing is every time I like launch up and just fly, regardless of whether it's gonna benefit the ball like ball carrier or not, I'm just like, I gotta fly. <laughs> Here went where Jared is. Just look up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's on the upper end of the map. That, that's one thing I never could get down the flying. I didn't like try, like I didn't go into training and like do it, but just like trying to do it here and there it never worked though. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm curious because I've noticed that people have been playing a lot more Assassin's Creed since the trailer for Valhalla dropped. Put your hand up here if you're playing Assassin's Creed right now. <gasps> All right. <laughs> My theory has failed. <laughs> what is that? What's going to pop in the Axio collection? But... Yeah, it's just because I bought the Axio collection, so, you know, I got to play it. You didn't put your hand up, Eric. You're playing it. Well, I, I already beat Assassin's Creed 2, so now I'm not currently playing it. Mm. So I get... There. Are you happy now, Evan? He just wants someone to join his. You team. got one head. <laughs> Honestly, I I would love to play it again, and I'd like I'd love to go back and play some of the old ones, and then I'd like to go play Odyssey again because I really enjoyed Odyssey. I have way too many again? games that I still have to play to do anything. I I would do it again because what happened to me, Eric, is I almost um I was going for hundred percent completion on that game, and. I had a quest, one of the mythology quest lines glitched on me at the very end, so I couldn't get the achievements that I wanted to get from them. So it was just kind of a downer on that one. And it was I was really excited to to fight because it was the Medusa uh, quest line that glitched on me, and I was really looking forward to that quest line. Um, so I would like to go back and play it again. It was a fun game. I wouldn't go for necessarily completion, but i just go through the story and... Um, do which, that. But... Which character did you play as? Are you gonna change it to the other one? Yeah, I probably go to Alexios. I played as um, Cassandra the first time. Okay, female one. Um, I uh, I usually do that. I usually play as if there's a female character. I usually play female character. Um, I love the, uh, <laughs> you're talking about it. All I can think about is how they pronounce Socrates in that game. Socrates. <laughs> oh yeah, no, instead of Socrates, Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if it's accurate or not, but I love it. I assume they did their research, so I don't know. They're like, um, more in our Greek and the shit we're saying, in, our, in the Greek oh. and Roman studies class, the one guy always called it Socrates. Doesn't mean it's correct. Yeah. The one prof, Every, but everyone, prof yeah. When I was in university, it was always Socrates. So, I what's the other? What what are other people pronouncing it as? Well, in Assassin's Creed, they pronounce it as Socrates. I guess. Is what these yeah. guys are saying? Socrates. I, I also I also could ask my my friend Alex because her family um, speaks Greek, so she might have, maybe it's a pronunciation of letters that difference. How to pronounce? <laughs> could be <laughs> very well. Be. They're retyping in the Greek keyboard. Uh, how to pronounce Socrates? All right, boys, hang on, doing some market research. It's, it's not market research. The pronunciation guide on YouTube calls it says Socrates. Yeah, I think you only say uh, Socrates if you're trying to be that one uh, person. 
Yeah, you I mean, so, well, choice. that's that's why I said it. It literally could just be the fact that if maybe it's in, in when you, it's just the accent in Greek or anything like that. I don't know. I also it's don't like really know a, what a Greek accent sounds like, to be uh, quite honest with you, off the top of my it's head. Like, so. It's like rhetoric. It's like, is it rhetoric or rhetoric? I who the fuck? Know. Who says rhetoric? Is it Arceus or Arceus? I've heard rhetoric what? all the time. I heard rhetoric Have you? all the time, yeah. More than you guys rhetoric. pronounce it rhetoric? <laughs> yeah. It's rhetoric. Like, uh, it's a rhetoric or question, rhetoric. Isn't, it? Is, is, isn't that how you'd say it? Or, I don't or is know. it a rhetoric? rhetoric. Oh, it, oh, sorry. It, it depends on the context, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, does does that, I, I was going to say I've always I've always heard rhetoric question or like if someone say like oh it's a rhetoric if it's, question. If it's yeah. a rhetoric question, you say rhetoric. But if it's like somebody's um, like way of looking at things or like their lesson plan or something, you say his rhetoric. Oh, okay, you know that's so, I've, I, okay. I've heard rhetoric in that in that format. I was assuming they were yeah okay. Okay. Does that mean well, they're completely two different words, or do they have the same? Is it the same word, but you just pronounce it differently depending it's on anonymous the shit? Let's find out. I'm already I'm way ahead of you, pal. Uh, um, re- the definition is relating to or concerned with the art of rhetoric. So I don't think that they're mm-hmm. um, synonyms or there's like a root word or anything. I think yeah. it's just, yeah. Root word. Everybody. English. Yes. <laughs> After English listen, suck. After the complex to this alien podcast, slang. You can get Pokemon. a degree. Yeah, so much knowledge that there. we have. I wish it was that easy, Peter. Just watch me play Trivial Pursuit. <laughs> You'll be the smartest man on earth after me. Too bad they have to watch. <laughs> You'll be the second though. smartest man on earth. <laughs> no, Evan. Yes. I uh. Dude, your dad is awesome. I really appreciate him, like, coaching us and, and uh, you know, all the time I spent with him. Um, did you raid his closet? No, oh, this is my shirt. I got this from Hawaii. Let that be a statement of how much dad vibes Evan has 24-7. <laughs> what, you don't, you don't like my shirt? No, it's, it's, it's very dad vibe. I'm trying to dress nice for the podcast. Clearly, none of you got the memo about it. Jesus. Are you saying that I'm dressed like shit? Like, is he saying Peter's dressed like shit? <laughs> He's saying Eric's dressed like shit? You Look at Eric. You. I literally just said to Eric he was a sexy beast when he walked when he came into the chat on video. <laughs> Listen, yeah, you attacked the... All that confidence away. You attacked the Lion King and he attacks his pride. Alright? You, you, why why is the Lion King attacking his pride? <laughs> That was Peter, the movie Peter, Peter, it's it's like Peter makes a comment to Evan, and Evan generalizes it and attacks everyone because of Peter's comments. <laughs> hey, uh, one person in the class can ruin it for everyone. That's true. Sorry, guys. It's like Peter's sitting there whispering in Evan's ear. He's like, "Get mad at everyone. <laughs> Unleash your rage." <laughs> Hey, it was uh, either going to be this shirt, though, or a Hawaiian shirt, so... That's better. I, don't I thought you just said you got that from Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, this... Yeah, but it's not like a, a Hawaiian shirt, you know? It's not like the, the beach kind of thing. Well, between. it's just a dad shirt, which some people might argue are the same thing, so... Okay, Mr. Vest inside and during the hey, spring. it's a jule, okay? <laughs> what? I told you, Matt. No, don't wear that vest. It's a jule. Well, Peter, you didn't want me to say it, but since Evan brought it out of me... 2020 is the year of the best. That it's never changed. Not. It's, gotten it's not the year of the Jule. 2020 is the year of the Jule. Ever since the year of the vest started, 2020 has gone downhill fast. Yeah, maybe that's <laughs> the reason. Yeah, I think it is the reason. <sighs> there we go. We're, 2020 saved. Everything's going to be better now. You got a lot to answer for, Matt. <laughs> actually you know what now that you brought this to my attention i'm a little concerned because i said 2020 was the year of the best i had such high hopes and look what fucking happened this is what happens when i try to make things trendy yeah take that as a note and also correlate and it to exactly other things. 2020, 2021 is the year of the flicks no 2020 no. this <laughs> This year is just uh, is just punishment for us trying to raid Area Fifty One last year. It's all it's all like punishment for that. It's a they consequence. 
Who is this we? No. I didn't try to raid Area 51. Yeah, but they, they, wait, wait they take the same out. kind of context that Evan does. The one kid in the class ruins it for everyone else. The people who raided Area 51 ruined the world. <laughs> mm -hmm. In fact, I saw you, Naruto, running with the rest of us. Don't, don't lie to me. <laughs> Jack was there. <laughs> um, you saw the Area areas. 51? Like, wasn't that whole thing actually just a setup for their music festival? Wasn't it actually secretly just a, a really smart ad, like, the whole time? No. No, no. no. The music festival up. is a result of the meet. They're like, well, how do you know it's not the other way? Why around? don't we have a music festival? Because the whole the raid I have a timeline? Yeah. Like, the, ra the raid. People standing Didn't you see... and being like, Hello, Didn't you see the, the documentary? Didn't you see the documentary on it that uh, Little Nas X did? He got live footage of the raid, and he put it to the tune of Old Town Road. You never saw that? God, can that guy write a different song? He didn't even write that song. God damn it. No, no. <laughs> he Is has it... two songs. One of them he didn't even write. The other one's about a sandwich. Dude, I love the guy. I think he's hilarious. It, it works. I didn't realize we were yeah, one of the all best well artists of the time. Release some more music. I don't think he. I don't. I don't know. I think the guy's done well with what he's what he's been given. <laughs> I I I love his Twitter because like I think um what was it the other day someone someone posted being like oh Doja Cat and Nicki Minaj and Beyonce are the only artists to hit number one on the top one hundred with a remix and Little Nas X replied I didn't make twenty seven remixes of the same song to be disrespected like this. <laughs> That's the problem. Why are you remixing a song twenty seven times? Because he's hilarious. Being funny has nothing to do with it. Release another <laughs> song. I think you're just, you just don't song. like the song. <laughs> I didn't like the song. I didn't like the original song. I don't like the remix song. I didn't like the 27 remixes after that. Maybe you don't like you guys went and saw him at Stampede last year. What did he do? Yeah, it was awesome. Well, it was what really he awesome. played the one time? He, he had he, he had twenty seven he had twenty seven songs. songs. They were all the same. <laughs> he played remix yeah. no, like three three seventeen twenty one. Ooh, that's a banger. Yeah, yeah no, you should have seen actually twenty one. No panini he, in there just to mix it up. He did like his two or three songs that nobody knows, and everyone was just kind of like, "Yeah, whatever." And then the moment. The moment that Old Town Road started, everyone was going nuts. I have the video on my phone. I definitely showed it to you guys before. And then after that, he played literally just because they just come out with that um, Mason Ramsey version as well. And then uh, and then they just played that like on the speakers. He wasn't even there at that point. <laughs> and everyone was still like, yeah. yeah. Repeat. He, he literally, so he, he performed Old Town Road. Everyone was like nuts. He was like, thanks, everyone. And then they and then they just played the new re. That's how it went, right, Evan? Eric? I I'm the, pretty yeah. sure they did not play. Like it wasn't part of the performance. Like it ended, and then I think they just played the Mason Ramsey version, and people went about their day. Yeah. But, no, it was quite chaotic. It was it was quite a wonderful moment. Yeah, when was, when the drop hit, it was on chaotic that song. for other reasons. It was awesome. It was awesome. It was great. Love it. That is one of my favorite videos of my phone because like. Like, I don't, you know, it's just not really a situation that I'm in a lot. And, like, I have a video of, like, like the, the, the stage and everyone going nuts. And then right before the beat drops, I, like, switch it to myself and Eric's, like, right behind me. And it's like, I got the horses. <laughs> it was really funny. One of my favorite <laughs> things about that concert, I didn't go to it because I didn't really want to. But uh, I was in the group chat while the concert was going on. <laughs> and there was uh woo! <laughs> I thought I was I I that made me laugh when you're like, you know, the favorite thing about going to that concert, well I didn't actually go to the concert, but our punishment for Old Town Road. Maybe that's what's happening. You know what? I can see it. I don't know. I think there's a lot worse things that happened before, during, and after Old Town Road that would be more willing to contribute to our current global situation. I refuse to believe that. Matt gave seventy one percent on the AP let test. I mean, we Gwyneth Paltrow make that's, a fucking snake oil racket popular and have a Netflix show about it. Hey, you know what? That's, that's I think fair. we're being punished for that. I wonder if her candles back in stock. Oh, we should get Wait, one. Oh, no. Shut the fuck up! Shut the no, fuck no, up! No, no, no. I'd rather get the Harry Style candle that smells like him. 
Yeah. Love me some Harry Styles. Can we get like a Jonas Brother candle? Is that a thing? Ooh, I want the Kevin candle. Let's What's just Nick candle. Throw Kevin it back to bathwater too. While we're at it, bathwater. That's where the that's where the disease came from. The pandemic state. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, that's a twist. That's very twisty. I'd buy it. Makes sense. I would buy the Nick Jonas candle just because hopefully it has some hints of Priyanka Chopra on there. Um, what? Well, the the famous anyway. Nick candle is just back in tired. stock. Peter, How much is it? Why did you have to look it up? It's a hundred and ten dollars. Oh, that's an expensive candle. That's not without shipping. That's not without. That's that's where it starts. Expensive vagina. <laughs> Was she not making enough money from being a famous actress? Nope. Hey, it's all she business. I'm just going to take all these like bad ideas celebrities have and collect them. So if I ever become popular one day, I can be like, all right, here's the list of things I have to do to make more money. I feel like that's scandal. That's a lot of things now. It where is. It's like it's just, it's it's just the name that's famous. Anything they do is famous because they are famous. See, and then I connect myself to them and continue the snowball. <laughs> Live connection. Oh. Live connection will become a snowball. All the wow. way up to fame. Oh, uh, Jared, you know uh, your boyfriend Pete Hines? Yeah. See, I, I I know you like that guy. <laughs> Yeah, what's up? He's uh he's gotten a little spicy on Twitter. Oh, has he? Well, he has. So, I haven't. I haven't. I'm not as as you know. I'm not huge on Twitter. So inform me. Yes, so continue. Someone was like, "Hey, like, cut the shit. When can we expect some more info on Elder Scrolls Seven? And so then Elder Scrolls Six. Six. Sorry, six. I apologize. And then Pete's reply. It's it's after Starfield, which you pretty much know nothing about. So if you're coming at me for details now and not years from now, I'm failing to properly manage your expectations. And I was Jeez. like, "Whoa, Pete Hines! Some, that's some anger." <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> maybe they should just maybe they should just start talking about Starfield now. Like, why? Why? Like, that's his fault. They're the ones that release that like footage of like just saying Elder Scrolls Six at E3 two years ago. Like, that's yeah. their own fault. This is, this is why it was nice when they used to... Bethesda used to be good, because what they do is they, would, they wouldn't they would announce something until the year it was coming out. Like, they would keep everything as rumors, and they would just kind of... Um, you'd have people doing videos, and they'd go, oh, well, this is the evidence they're doing this, or whatever. Um, and then the year it would come out, they'd be like, oh, here's the game trailer, here's a bunch of stuff on it, it's coming out this holiday season. And now they're like... Then they did exactly that. They released footage... Like, everyone knows Starfield's coming, but then they also released footage of Elder Scrolls 6. It's like, what do you think? People want to have things. You can't just tease a fucking yeah. uh, mountain with a couple things underneath it and, and be like, it's coming. We're not going to say to when or even give you a guideline of it. I know more about Elder Scrolls 6 than I do about Starfield. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Like... I just, I their their marketing team to me just doesn't do a great job. They used to, but they don't do it anymore. I don't know if any of their teams do a good job yeah. anymore. I don't That's think, fair. I, I think they they're on a bit of a corporate. downward slope. Oh, they definitely. Yeah, are. Doom Doom mm -hmm. did good, didn't they? Doom Eternal was pretty good. Yeah, Doom was fine. It, but that's mostly id software, I would say. Not. Oh, fair uh, enough. Bethesda. Fair enough. Bethesda's just publishing it for them. Okay. Yeah. Bethesda should stop making games. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Bethesda Spicy just needs games. to do. I think Bethesda just needs to do a reboot of themselves. Like change change their. Those yeah. When are I, we gonna get Bethesda two? Come on, <laughs> Bethesda. <laughs> Come on, Pete Hyde. Because we, we had a conversation with us a while back, where I forget which company you guys said kind of went in the dark, and then all of a sudden came out with a really good game after having not done so well. Um, I think that's more what they have to do is just kind Capcom? of, yeah, it was Capcom. Mm. Yes. It's like kind of step away from the spotlight for a bit. Stop trying to be the, this, try, trying to compete as much and step away and make your games and release a good game. Cause if they start releasing good games again, they're not going to have an issue. 
But if they keep releasing half finished yeah. games or games that people just don't like, there's no point. So, yeah. I don't know. I've I've pretty much given up trying to defend them in all aspects because there's really no defending anything they've done. They've pretty much shit on their fans, and that's all they've done. Like he's talking yeah. about properly managing expectations. What about Fallout seventy six? Right. Yeah, like- very poorly managed expectations. Yeah, we're kind of like, used to it by now, guys. Yeah, you can properly manage expectations by making a good game and then releasing that good game. It's that well, easy. Well, and it's like it's like look at time. it's like it look at it works. this way though. It's although Fallout Four had its issues and it wasn't as good on the choice based system because it wasn't as in depth. Um, they got rid of a lot of the karma system and all that. It still was. They didn't announce a Fallout game since Fallout New Vegas came out. I mean, they didn't announce that, but they still helped publish that one. But they they didn't announce it until E3, the year it was going to come out. And I think that's when you should do that kind of stuff. Not not announcing, like, if he said that, then Elder Scrolls 6 is easily two to three years out from actually being dropped as a game. It's like, why do you announce that? What What do you uh, gain? You just yeah. you you literally that's like that you gain nothing. There's no point in doing that besides pissing off your fan base because they think when you announce it that oh, is it going to come out in the next year or two? Or no, no, it's not coming out for another three, four years down the road, right? So yeah, I think talking, they, like he talks about managing expectations, but like you're the one who put yourself in this position where people want this thing that you teased. Like yeah. you dug your own grave. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know, since they really had nothing to show for like this new game, that they were really just announcing it to get the kids to shut up. You know, like yes, we're making Elder Scrolls Six. Okay, stop asking. But obviously, they're just you know, opening themselves up to dozens more questions yeah. by doing that. They shouldn't feed See, the beast. I'm literally, I'm hopeful for Starfield, but I'm with Evan. I haven't heard virtually anything on it. Like virtually anything. They had that one announcement of it, and then it was like, yeah, it's a thing. It's coming. Yeah. Still don't really know yeah. what. Starfield is space. No. Yeah, no one does. Space. I actually saw I saw someone on my Discord friend list playing Starbound, and I thought to myself, I was like, "Did Bethesda come out with that game already?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. They've 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 ruined. They. I mean, as a fan, like I'm still hopeful, but at the same time, like I said, I can't I can't defend a company that you know, hasn't given you any way to defend them. Like, they're, <laughs> Very large. there's nothing you, know you can what? say it's actually, Yeah. It's actually kind of funny because um, Obsidian and Bethesda announced, like, Obsidian announced the Outer Worlds around the same time Bethesda announced Starfield. And then there was that conversation of, like, oh, they're going up against each other in, like, this space-type Fallout game, right? Yeah, and that. then, like, in the meantime, Obsidian's come out with their game, it had great success, and they're moving on to bigger and better things, and we're still just waiting for Starfield. <laughs> like, <laughs> See, I, 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 no. I, I, still, I still would prefer, and I say this to any game company, I don't care who it is, I prefer someone to lay a game instead of coming out with it, yeah, just rushing it. I yeah. agree, but like, you announced it two years ago, and you don't tell us anything you say it's for next gen yeah next gen's coming up can we get something yeah, next gen is 2020 it's coming well you look yeah. you look December. at the that that new um uh i know you guys say it every time to me and i keep forgetting the guy's name who's doing it but the um the e3-esque show that's jeff coming up Keeley this summer oh jeff Keeley. Yeah. Keeley, yeah it's like there's a prime opportunity the xbox game footage was a prime opportunity to have your game come out there's so many like steps they could have been taken that could have been interesting, especially since I don't know how many of you watched that uh, X series um, video, but there wasn't a whole lot of gameplay they actually released. Majority of it was cinematic trailers, with maybe there was a shot of a cinematic in the game, but there was no real like actual gameplay. Besides they showed maybe the series X or whatever. starting sequence, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Which is really there was a part. there was a really good video I saw about the PS5 and its uh, gameplay. Yeah, because they actually yeah, released I gameplay. I saw that. Yeah, the they they actually had you weird. know the character moving in the game and yeah, yeah. gameplay. I'm I little, know. Yeah. The um, I don't play I, my I game. Heard that. Talking, I heard people saying that the Unreal Engine Five um footage that they showed 
did a better job of demonstrating like what ex- the next gen Xbox is going to do than their own like insider Xbox thing did. I was uh I was watching a video just doing game about gaming news and stuff and uh one of the Xbox marketing head guys or general strategy guys something like that he uh he said that like oh, yeah I admit it we we done goofed with that event we said gameplay but that's the wrong word we shouldn't have used that word yeah no. they I think they specifically said like we set the wrong expectation for what this event mm-hmm. was and I like take that on me for a lot of expectations for doing that. I will yeah. say there's some neat games that got announced during that, like world premieres. Like there's that thriller Silent Hill-esque horror game that's coming out that looks pretty sick. I forget what it's called, um, but that looked really good. Yeah, it, sound- it has the same, it has the same uh, composer that did the soundtrack for uh, Silent Hill, so that's going to be pretty sweet. So, so many I don't know. There's interesting stuff coming out, but I just, yeah, the Bethesda thing infuriates me. That yeah, Honestly, Pete Hines deserves the heat that he's getting right now. Yeah. By the way, I did a quick uh, Google for Starfield, and there was an article written in February 2020 that said, everything we know about Starfield is that it's a game in space. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys follow um, Saved You a Click video games on Twitter? Yeah. I so highly fun, recommend yeah. it. If you want like a if you want like a textbook like you if you want it laid out in front of you what a joke video game journalism has become just follow that Twitter page for a week. It's honestly unreal cuz they so many different like uh, news outlets do it where it's like everything we know about the Borderlands film and then it's just like nothing, nothing and nothing. It's 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 laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's his retweet. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, yeah, but- nothing. It's in production. <laughs> media. Me- media is like good. that now, though. There's a lot of shit where it's just about the clicks. They really don't care what information they're bringing you. If they can put a title yeah. like that, where it's like, everything we know about X. And mm-hmm. and basically, people well, will click on it because they're like... You just look at their headline on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, unfortunately, it's a product of... Our... Sorry, you were saying, Eric? You actually have to go to the site for them to get any like revenue from what yeah. they're making. So, yeah. Sucks, but it also, I think it's you know I understand it. Yeah, it's, it's a product wrong. of our own creation. We we did it to ourselves as a, as an industry. Like everyone just wanted to know the information right away, and as a result, this is what it's come to. And it's kind of like a crazy industry to navigate for these video game developers and these console developers because people want to know things now 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 and then like yeah it's just i think the whole gaming industry is kind of messed up and how it's developed to that like no one can navigate it properly anymore because we did it Mm -hmm. to ourselves yeah yeah Uh, what's interesting i remember seeing evan retweet this um There was that one guy who made the article about Animal Crossing and basically, like, intentionally shit on the game to get rage clicks. And it was, like, the the intent was very obvious even just by the writer's tweets. And then, like, what Evan retweeted was that. And I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was, like, another fake headline that was basically explaining that, like, this is what news outlets have to do to get any kind of uh, relevancy because the Google and Facebook advertising systems have fucked that over, apparently, or something. I was trying to find it so I could read it, but I'm having no Luck, I could but, totally uh, see myself doing that, just shitting on everything and everyone to try to get. You do, it. yeah, I know. Yeah, but just say it. Yeah. <laughs> see yourself doing it because you already do it. <laughs> I can see you doing it too. <laughs> I've seen you do it with my own eyes. <laughs> well, guys, if you want to see me get do more of the angry stuff, the grr yell time. You gotta check out the rest of my you content. Okay? I don't know. I I had. You ever try to do something on the fly, but the brain's like, "Hey, you you don't go that fast," you know? Have you seen me? Yep. Have you heard All me the- talk on our streams or anything? That's Once literally time, the definition of my, <laughs> my life on our streams. <laughs> no, my brain is too large. And oh yes, <laughs> big brain. I'll see big brain. I use twenty. That should be your new Discord brain. name. Brain is swollen, and it makes me have a hard time. Yes. Well, can we get an F in the chat for Eric's swollen brain? F. F. <laughs> All right. That's the end of our podcast today. It was a good one. Time flew by today. Uh, we're Live Connection. We stream five days a week. Variety of different content. If you really want to get to know us, check out our Discord. You can learn more about us, our Minecraft realm, and all that good stuff. I hope you have a good Sunday. 
Bye. What's with the sign language going on on the screen? We're all trying to experiment with our hands. Well then, have a have a good day. I don't <laughs> I don't know how to respond to this. I don't know how to work. With this. <laughs> Eric, I know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>